My name is Apurva and welcome to a short introduction to service principle names and how they work in Kerberos authentication. This short discussion assumes that the listener already has a basic understanding of Kerberos. Service principle names are a critical piece of how Kerberos authentication works and in order to know how to troubleshoot Kerberos issues, it is important to fully understand what a service principle name is. Service principal names commonly referred to as SPNs are used by domain controllers to match a published service to a security principle. That security principle can either be a user or a computer. So what exactly is an SPN? A SPN or a service principal name is a short string of text that is made up of three parts. A service type a DNS style hostname and an optional port number. This string of text is stored in Active Directory in an attribute named Service Principal Name, and this Service Principal Name attribute is included in a user or a computer account in AD and is populated behind the scenes either by services running on a computer or dynamically by an application or manually by an administrator of an application if the application does not register these SPNs itself. Now let's take a look at a few examples of service principal names. The first example here is CIFS forward slash fileserver.contoso.com. Here the service name is CIFS which is SMB and the host name is fileserver.contoso.com. Let's take a look at another example. This one is for SQL and the SPN is MSSQL SVC forward slash SQL backend.contoso.com colon one four three three. Here the service name is MSSQL SVC the DNS style hostname which is sqlbackend.contoso.com and the optional port number which was 1433. Computers in a domain register some default services in their SPNs. These services may appear as generic host type service principal name but the single host SPN entry in Active Directory ultimately maps to many services. Let's take the concept of service principal names a little further and talk about SPNs and how they relate to processes and services. Many services on a computer will run as an identity of that computer, which is why those services would appear entered in Active Directory in the SPN attribute for that computer object. But it is common for a service to run under a different identity. Let's take the idea of SPNs a bit further and talk about SPNs and how they relate to processes and services. For that, let's take a look at security context of a process. A client process can be some other than the logged on user. For example, something with a run as command, a mapped drive with alternate credentials, or stored network credentials in Credentials Manager. A server process can be some other than the computer hosting that service, such as a service account, a well-known or a managed account, or a worker process such as an application pool account. For most services on a computer will be running as the identity of the computer, which is why these services would appear entered in Active Directory under the SPN attribute for that computer. But it is also common for a service to run under a different identity. That identity is a service account and in that case the service principal names for the service will appear in the SPN attribute of that security principal or that service accounts object in Active Directory and not in the computer's object. Why do services sometimes want to have service accounts of their own? This reason makes perfect sense if we consider how Kerberos works. 
When a client wants access to a resource on a remote computer, it needs to request a Kerberos ticket for that resource. This request must have an SPN, which is matched by the domain controller searching AD with an object. This object in AD, in addition to having that SPN, will also have a password that is used to encrypt the ticket that the domain controller gives to this client. When the client in turn provides that ticket to the remote server that it is requesting resources to access from, only that service account can open that ticket since only it will have the password. In a nutshell, this is why which object in Active Directory an SPN appears on matters. A good analogy for SPNs and password relationship is when you rent a car from a rental agency. When renting or getting access to a specific car, the rental agency gives you specific keys. The keychain will often have a little tag that identifies the car the key goes to. That tag is similar to SPNs in Kerberos. When you go to the parking lot, the keys will only work on the car they intended to work. In a similar way, a service ticket will only work with the service that the SPN matches. The SPN itself is just a locator to identify how to get to the listening process. Similar to an IP address and a port number, we have different components to ensure that no two paths are alike. To add to this SPN explanation, it is also important to take a note of the fact that SPN is comprised in part from a DNS hostname. This DNS integration aspect is good to understand since it comes into play as clients construct SPNs to submit with their requests. In conclusion, SPNs are used by the KDC to locate the security context under which the requested service is running. The KDC needs to accurately locate both parties in the client-server exchange. The client-server exchange involves the process making the request and the service that is servicing that request. This may or may not be the logged on user or the target computer hosting the service. Thank you for your time. I hope this presentation was useful to you.